Greetings everyone, welcome to Dead Spatula's D&D Online Tutorial. Today I will be covering the UI and how to maximize it. So, everyone here has noticed, uh, if you saw my uh, video on game mechanics, tutorial game mechanics, you all saw that I had a very weird opening uh, thing. That's because you guys are... If you're from WoW, you're familiar with add-ons, the fact that you can change the game UI with add-ons. There isn't a way to change the game UI with add-ons in this game. Uh, well, there is, but they don't have the complexity. The only thing you can do to the UI is skin it. So, uh, there are quite a few people who have made skinning UI, who have made skins for this game. There are not many people, but there are a few. And I'll show you the one I use. But first I'd like to show you my normal setup for this game. Uh, yeah, so you'll note I'm just flipping out bars. I have multiple that I flip out uh, when I do this. I tend to position my standard bar at the top. You see how I've done that, how I've positioned it up here above the others. Uh, that is intentional. Uh, this one's bigger than the others, and so it fits three across with this with that one up top. In a way, it doesn't with them on the bottom. So this is how I normally do it. One is always your default setting. If you press control on a number, you can change your default, which bar your uh, hotkeys are working with. But, uh, I just tend to keep anything that I want to actively quickly hit on here, and the rest it's stuff I want to click. Uh, makes it a little easier for me. Um, and the other key thing about UI, I was saying I'd show you, uh, two things. First of all, combat dice. Uh, you can just change it. It's completely a, you know, it has no in-game effect aside to make it look, your die over here, look cooler. Uh, I've chosen alien. You don't see what it is here, but trust me, when you attack, you'll notice the difference in your die. Uh... And why did I close that? Because I needed one other thing. All the way down at the bottom, current user skin. There are people online that will tell you how to install skin. I'll even show you at a later date. You go to DDO Lite, which is the uh, one I use, and boom. Notice how I can see through behind everything. Uh, there's actually a patch you'll have to do, which is why, which is why I'll put up a video as to how to install it if you guys want it and uh... it'll do things like make your map actually work the patch um, but yeah you can see through and now the overall world is a lot easier to view and that's my favorite skin it's my favorite skin for that very reason um, so yes your UI uh... you've got some you know it's pretty obvious what some things are HP, spell points, if you're a monk, key goes right here. This is your chat windows. Now, general chat, if you're ever from, from WoW, general chat is like Baron's chat. It, it's, it's, it's got good, and it's got bad, and it's just kind of all mishmashed together. You don't like general chat. You want to get rid of it. It's annoying. Boom. That just, er, I just got rid of general chat. You right-click general. Go down to Incoming Text Types. This is what you see. And you can turn on and off General Chat and any of the other chat channels. I'm going to turn it on for now. Uh, and all these tabs can do that. How do you change what you're seeing, you know, what you type as? Right click, set outgoing text type. You can set what your default type is. Um, you can rename these, you can add them. If you detach them, I've never found a way to reattach them, so, you know, be careful if you try to detach them. Now, uh, going into other, uh, 
So, you know, that's key. Also, if you right-click a name, you can send a tell, party invite, as a friend, guild invite if you have a guild, squelch, that'll actually uh, squelch your... Um, that'll actually slash ignore, and they can't uh, audio chat with you in a uh, group. Unsquelch, re remove someone, gold spammer, uh, you rarely see those, but occasionally, occasional, and uh, report harassment if someone is harassing you. So, uh, yeah. There's a couple other, uh, that is, that's some, you know, key factors. There's the focus orb over here. This is what, when you target something, it has different options based on who you're targeting. If you're targeting a player, you see now I get new options as opposed to targeting an NPC. Uh, friend list him, send tell, challenge a player, uh, examine. Fortunately, examine doesn't give you as much as I would like. It gives you their class level, gender, race, and buffs affecting them. Uh, you can invite them to a party and trade. Uh, you got the NPC, and all you've got is a use and examine selected. It's kind of a generalized. So, it's pretty useful for, uh, in general. I like, uh, it's functional. Map. Uh, the minimap is a key. Do I have? Yes, I have time. Okay. So, minimap. Uh... You know, this is your minimap. It shows your general area. You can hover over and see what's what everything is, what the map notes are. Up here, this explains your instance of the area you're in. So, if whenever you're in a public area, you are in diff you could be in different instances. Uh, Corthos Village itself has three different instances. So, if you party with someone and you can't, and you're both outside of Hayton's crypt, but no one knows where the, the crypt is. Um, or, or you're both outside the crypt, but you can't see each other, you're probably in different instances. Once you become a group and enter a public area, you'll always be in the same instance. But when you first group, you might be in different instances. So keep an eye out for that. Now, if you open up your map to your full size, uh, there's not everything's on here, but a few things are, and I can show you how to use your map. I'm looking for my wizard trainer. Uh, map notes will tell you what everything is. Quest turn in, travel points, quest locations. Notice these, these statements of unpurchased. Uh, that's a very uh, key if you're not in a... If you're a free-to-play player or a premium player, that'll tell you that those are stuff that comes from other content packs. Um, I'm not going to try... I'm going to try not to get into this, but... Uh, Suffice to say, this game is free to play, but this game is paying for content. And uh, to to say that you shouldn't pay for content is kind of uh, strange. So, yeah, you're gonna pay for content, um, and content you haven't paid for is gone. They do give you some content free, and that's great. Uh, but auctioning or patron agents. If you get enough favor for patrons, and I'll get into that later. This is these are the people that you want to go to. Mailboxes, pawn shops, raids, combat areas. Everything, it tells you what each of these are. I want to find my, as I said, I was going to find my wizard trainer, so who? Fighter, ranger, sorcerer trainers? Nope. Barbarian, cleric, paladin? Nope. Bard, monk, rogue, and wizard trainers? Okay, so that's where I need to go. And in fact, I'm right near there, and boom, there's the wizard trainer. So that was kind of a stupid uh, example, but... Gold chalices, quest givers, check marks, uh, quest rewards. Gray doors are quests that you're not on. Gold doors are quests that you are. If the chalice is blue, it's a quest you've completed but can redo. Look them over. Gold things, they're vendors. Look at them. They'll tell you what type of vendor they are. Adventure areas, tell you which adventure area. Travel point, tell you where it's going to travel to. Pay attention to these. This is a tavern. All the taverns have red uh, bags. So, check those out. That'll tell you a lot about your environment. Come back to me next time. I'll cover some more stuff on the UI. See ya.